found the Battlefield Walker channel, and I'm glad you've joined us. We're in the final video today of a series we've been doing on an old-time relic hunter who started back in the 1960s and whose collection has been hidden away behind locked doors for over 50 years. We took a look last week at his beautiful collection of edged weapons. Today though, we truly have saved the best for last. You're gonna see an unbelievable collection of buttons and buckles go away. Maybe you thought there was no way that we could have anything better than what we've already had, but you're gonna see some buttons and plates today that are gonna knock your socks off. So here we go again. <laughs> today with the buttons and our plan is just to bring them out and then just to start sitting down and looking at them and talking about them. But right now we're just still bringing them out. You know you're in for a good day when the Eagle General Service Eagle buttons are just thrown into a little box. <laughs> They're not worthy of display. And of wow. course I'm being facetious for you guys who are right now having heart attacks watching this. Eagles, 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 and Eagles. Cuff buttons, coat buttons. Look at the gold gilt. Man, oh man. The light hits a wow. different. What have you got there? Tell us what you have. It's a whole, it's like a, a whole bunch of buttons that are joined together. I thought that was just a jar. This is a, more unique for us because I'm seeing this stuff for the first time too. Calvary, Dragoon, D's, I's, C's. For those of that maybe watching don't know, the different letters that are inside the middle of the shield, many of them have that 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 specified what kind of unit it was. So I infantry, C cavalry, D dragoons, A artillery, uh, R right here is rifleman. Yep. What? Oh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> What's in there? Oh, block A's, block I's. I see New York buttons. Well, this is just another box of nothing but Confederate uh, buttons. There's A's. There's if you look here with the little like starburst look, that's those are Carolinas. Um, <laughs> it's pretty astonishing. If you look at these right here, those are Carolina. And so you have a Georgia cuff right here, still with gold on it. Or, Here's a Mississippi cuff with gold still on it. If you can see the palmetto tree. Oh, my word, here. look by the Mississippi cuff. That's a CS Navy. Oh, it sure is. I couldn't see. Yeah. Uh, there's Louisiana right here. Where? Right here. You see the pelican? Let's see if I can get zoomed in. Yep. I'll tell you what. Just hold it real still, and I'm just going to go over these buttons. So this is one case of buttons. Anything in their Union mud duck or everything no, Confederate? Everything's Confederate. I'm just going to let you see. Oh, my All word. clearly dug. And most in, I mean, lots of guilt, most in just excellent condition. We're just looking at, uh, at, at, at some of the buttons and what's this, two pounds? Yeah. Here's two pounds of buttons. One at a time, they don't mean much. As somebody pointed out on the on, on uh, the uh, the first video, every button here is connected to a specific person. Young man yeah. could have been 25, could have been 16, could have been 45. Yeah. Um, somebody from Vermont, somebody from Massachusetts, somebody from New York, uh, and of course, Southern soldiers. People forget that there's no way to tell which of these buttons here were worn by a Confederate. But if you were in the Union Army, you were an Army career Army guy, and then your your state withdraws and becomes part of the Confederacy, you're going to be wearing your uniform. You're probably going to be wearing Union buttons. They used to wear U.S. plates turned upside down. Right. And the different sizes, like that right there, it would be the smaller size of button would be a cuff button. Yes. 
And then these would be coats found on their coats mm -hmm. and things of that nature. This box, which I would say uh, we'd have to say these take a step up from what we were looking at. Which again, especially in the Confederacy, you would have had boys just showing up with what they have on the back. Absolutely, they yeah. They wouldn't have been issued uniforms. Uh, yeah, many you, of them would not have been issued uniforms. So, Like, that's a, I guess you you would consider that a fancy, a dandy button is yeah, what yeah, people call it. But um, but again, if an old boy from, you know, from Kentucky steps out and joins the Confederacy and he pulls his wool coat off the wall. That's what he. That's, that's what he buttons his coat with. Yeah. Look at that. So here's more of those kind of things, and there's two nice eyes. I mean, for me, if I found an eye with that kind of gilt on it, that would be <laughs> in the front day. of. That'd be in the front of. Well, and also it would be in the front of my display case, not thrown in here on bounty paper towels. Yep. yep. But back in the day, that's what they did. I love these big dandies, man. He's got a bunch of them. Yeah, he man. does. Look at, look at that one. That's where, it's, where it's been etched. In. Oh. So you saw this last time when we were taking our first look at everything. There's a Fifth Corps badge, which also could have been one of the others. There's some letters, BHI, 5, some buttons, bit bosses. Oh, look, that's a matching pair of spurs, Phil. I didn't notice mm -hmm. that. Uh, crossed cannons, crossed swords. I think we're talking, I mean, obviously, artillery, cavalry. The killer for me is this puppy. And I don't know this for a fact because I've never found one, but I believe that to be the top of a uh, flag or guide arm. To, to think that a flag was flying from there and saw so much fighting and, and, and battle is just, uh, just unbelievable. Okay. I am in awe already. <laughs> Look at the guilt on these things. I can't wait because that glass is dirty. I can't wait to see it. Bring it, bring it. Holy moly. Yeah. Staff officer, cuff. New York. We see a bunch of New Yorks in there. That... I know I've seen that I've before. I've seen that too. Uh, Connecticut, I think. I see. Yeah, that's Connecticut. Connecticut? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because here's another one, even better. Oh, yeah. Beautiful Connecticut button. Look, I'm this, gonna... look at that Rhode Island. Oh. Look at that Rhode Island. Look at the size of it and wow. the guilt that's on there. That's unbelievable, man. Oh, my word. That's, that, that's just as beautiful a button as I've ever seen, Doug. Yeah. This is a main... M A I N E, a main state button. It's just, just incredible. What is that? Ew, let's see. Volunteer. That is a New Hampshire. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen a New Hampshire. And this is specifically New Hampshire volunteer militia. Yeah. What is that? Vermont. Vermont. Which would make sense because these are all northeast buttons. Mm -hmm. You've got New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, Connecticut, New York. Do you want to tell them what a dragoon is? You tell them. I always understood dragoons, which go all the way back to Revolutionary uh, War time, but were sort of phased out during the Civil War. I think mm -hmm. that's about the time they realized this isn't smart anymore. Mm -hmm. It was a cavalry unit, basically, that would dismount and fight as an infantry unit uh, so it was almost like mounted infantry. C for cavalry, dragoon, infantry, R for riflemen. Man, look at the guilt on these buttons, man. It's unreal. Basically, when you're looking, that is a ball, ball button. button. Yeah, I've got a few. Um, I think we're talking about Zouav troops, which would make sense right. as German. well. So, and, and a lot of Zouav troops came from New York and, and the Northeast. Or I think that, they were just volunteers yeah. who, who had a lot of pride in their German yeah, heritage. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. These next two here are something else because we're going to get into Confederate buttons here. I mean, there's a Virginia that looks like that just came off the off the wow. assembly line. I love those high domes that are. That, yeah. You know, they're not flat. They're yeah. That nice curve to them. Here's a, a whole line of nothing but A's. These are all artillery. All these are Confederate, by the way. 
artillery buttons, infantry and artillery buttons, I's and A's. Look at that folded over North Carolina. Yeah, that's a North Carolina sunburst that probably a bored soldier popped off and he, he folded it over. Oh, uh, that's North Carolina. What? That's a variant of North Carolina. What? Take we'll a look. Take a picture of that. Yeah, that is a Carolina. Darn if it didn't. What is this? Is that a Georgia? Oh, that's a Georgia. Let me see. Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. I mean, yeah. Incredible collection. I mean, that's, yeah. All right, man. This is probably the most impressive. Check that out. Wow. Holy mac. I mean, yeah, that right there. Confederate Block I, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. What is that? Block I, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, not sure, North Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, North Carolina Sunburst, Block I, Virginia, C for Cavalry, Script I, CSA, hello, I mean, hello CSA, rare, 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 rare. Birmingham, ah, look at, how about that? Birmingham. This button was made in Birmingham, Alabama, a line day, excuse me, that's a line day. That's Louisiana. That's Louisiana. Oh, is it Louisiana? Yeah, Cuff. Cuff? Yeah. Cross cannons. Somebody can tell us what that is. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Clearly an artillery unit, but yeah. what unit it is. It's a beautiful Confederate staff button. Virginia, there's your script die. Last time. This is museum level stuff. <sighs> museum and level stuff right yeah. here. Part of the joy of having these things is the ability to touch it and others to touch it. Mm -hmm. You know, like I love when people come in that don't know much and I can hand them a cannonball or a, a button or whatever and they hold it. There's something special about oh, that. Oh, there so is. What we have here mm. is, would be amazing enough just on its own. This is what we refer to as a Confederate drum canteen. Super simple construction, soldered edges, a simple cork stopper down here taped onto the canteen. It says Jesse Woodruff, Cumberland Grays, Company D, 21st Virginia Infantry. Some of you guys, you have opened a new window on yep. your computer them up. and you are looking up Jesse Woodruff of the Cumberland Grays, Company D, 21st Virginia Infantry. Feel free to share with us what you learned. I'm thinking about the Battle of Cold Harbor in the middle of the summer. Oh, you drink that before lunch. Yeah. What what a what a piece of history right there! All right, here's another. Here you you hold it. Okay. That's a Union, uh, what they call a Union smooth side canteen. He did dig that one. Absolutely. And I bet you, when you see what we're doing now, you're going to say, "Oh, something different is about to happen." Mm. Here, you do the honors. All right, here we go. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at the 1861. The stamp there. C O L L I N S. Collins and something, Hartford, Connecticut. People weren't as concerned with how balanced it would be because it's ceremonial. What an attic find. <laughs> yeah. But I think we're going to pull some buckles and plates out next. Good grief. One of the things that I'm interested in is when buckles or plates or anything for that matter gets personalized. A soldier scratches his name or initials. We have clip corners. We have a fifth core badge uh, carved from what I believe is a pocket watch case. Take a look at those buckles as you pull them out and make sure that nobody's, there's nothing personalized on the back. All right. Breastplates. Checking this for any names or initials or makers or anything like that. Oh man, wait till you see. Wait till you see what's in here. How about that? Yeah.
Phillips said, could that be a barn? Could oh, it be right. a flag? Right. But TL owned it. I don't know who right. TL was, right. but he owned it. I am under the impression that some were made to be buckles. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But that's definitely not a standard, um, you know, cross belt plate. This one has, is that 17? Well, no. Oh, great day in the morning. There's no telling what he was notching there. Can you see the notches? Yes. Oh, my. So you're suggesting. <laughs> I don't know what I'm suggesting. Yeah. But it is definitely something that's been marked there. What you got there? I honestly don't know. Infantry. I see a lead lice comb. Yeah. I've only found pieces of those. I mean, look how incredibly brilliant. I mean, how thin that is. Yeah. Not sure what that is. Some I don't know. But this right here, hang on. I wanna... What is that? I'm going to say that's some sort of hat pin, like almost like... Uh, an... Shaco. Yeah. I guess some sort of like rosette type deal. Bridal, I would think. Look at that, they made a lice comb out of lead. Hmm. Wow. How miserable do you have to be with lice? So you got your lead lice comb, you got your real folding lice comb. Look at that. See, this table right here would make most people just wet their pants. The soldier who wore it has got his name engraved in it. It says G-E-N-L, -G General Ulysses S. Grant. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> the whole time you were talking, I'm looking at the camera going. This oh. is going to be fun. This is unveiling plates that we are told are not quite what we would call common. Okay, definitely puppy paws. Okay. Definitely no leather. All three hooks intact. Nice skinny tongue. Oval or square? Oval. All right. All right. I'm. I'm. I'm gonna let you uh, turn it over. I don't want you to see. Okay. All right. I didn't see. All right. You ready? I'm ready. I'm just gonna tell you this. Okay. <laughs> it's 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 a state. <gasps> it's, it's a, a state. state. It's a state okay, buckle. Okay. Let me do some guessing. Then. Okay. Is it a state of New York? S N Y. Could be. Flip it over and find out. <laughs> I must have hit it. You must have hit it. Oh, that's a gorgeous one, isn't it? Yes, that's beautiful. Now, I get to tell y'all that even though I've never found an SNY, he has found an SNY. I have only found two buckles in my life, or two plates, and SNY was my first. And tell them how deep it was. It was halfway sticking out of the ground. It's sticking out of the ground. And stuck up at the top. That's a beautiful S N Y. It really and is. That's absolutely beautiful. That's very Get that nice chocolate much. patina. Yeah. Ain't nothing crumbly about uh, these. One hundred and fifty plus years versus a hundred years. That fifty years makes all the difference in the world. Yeah. yeah. All right, Christmas morning. Just a little at a time. Let's see what we can. Do that one last. Uh oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Potential spam. Potential spam. The suspense. It keeps getting interrupted. What is right. it? Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. I'm feeling obviously a buckle. Oval or square? Oval. Oval, okay. Feel right there. Feel There's it. There's leather. Still. There's leather There's still, still on it. Yeah. That feels like puppy paws to me. All right, let's see what we got. Mm. Okay. She's beautiful so far. Man, look at the condition of that leather, mud duck. I, I don't know what to expect here. What is it? Ready? Yep. Oh, my. <laughs> oh. Mississippi. Look, it ain't like I've ever found one. <laughs> Nope. Okay, first of all, look at that brown patina. Perfect. Just a perfect brown patina on that on that drooped wing eagle. We turn it over. We got a lead fill. We got puppy paws back here. That leather is period. That leather is the only time I've ever seen anybody fold it over like that. Can you imagine what it was like when he pulled that out of the ground? No, I cannot imagine. I would have called you. While it was still flipped over, <laughs> yeah. and going, hey, you're gonna, you're gonna guess what's about to happen? Yeah. We have one more. Yep. Oh. You want to touch it, don't you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Okay. Okay. Maybe. What, what are What are your first thoughts about that? It's lighter than the others. It doesn't have near the amount of lead that clearly the S&Y had. 
think a little more. Something you said I think is absolutely true. Something else you said I think is misleading, and I don't think it's true. Uh oh. Not as heavy. Right. I think you're right on the money there. Okay. But you said not as much lead. I think you're wrong about that. Okay. I think there's no lead at all. Back first, back first. Don't let us see the front. Okay. All right, so here's the back. Oh! oh! Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's nice. That's I've never held one before. This is... Uh... I've held very few. Wow. Look at that. It does not have any lead fill. It is just a solid plate. The plate is rather thin. But this, I would consider this the kind of the middle of the road for attractiveness. But I can tell you one thing, you don't run across them every day. No. Not at all. Wow. Good night, nurse. Um, let's make this look really pretty and get a couple of still pictures. Yep. That's like telling Brooke Shields, hey, could you just look pretty for a moment? Guys, I can't tell you what a pleasure it's been to bring these videos to you. The first one just blew our socks off with the numbers of views. We were shocked. I am indebted to that old gentleman who started swinging a GI mine detector back in the early 1960s and didn't quit for the next 50 years. If it weren't for him, you wouldn't have got to see and I wouldn't have got to handle the uh, beautiful and incredible relics that we've been looking at for the past few weeks. I'm indebted to him and I'm also indebted to the inheritor, the guy who these relics were left to. And now he's faced with the daunting task of building something to hold this beautiful collection and to be able to display it in a way that people can learn from history. I hope to be involved in that process as well. Maybe in the future we'll be able to do a little video on the gentleman who amassed the collection. Maybe we'll be able to follow up in the future. I'm sure this won't be for a year or two, but maybe we'll be able to follow up with what happened to the collection. Regardless, either way, I'm going to be back with you, and I'm looking forward to walking those battlefields again once the Virginia heat lets up a little bit, and we'll be back in the woods digging again. I'm so glad you've joined us. Subscribe if you haven't yet and feel free to comment about what caught your eye in this video. Until we're together again, be good and remember to say your prayers.